Okay, so we're going to talk about chasing in the flanks. Uh, so we've got this not so roundish um, moon. And what I want to do is I kind of want to squeeze in the perimeter so that it's round. So as I continue to carve, you know, the fact that it's kind of a lumpy, wonky moon isn't going to bug me for the rest of my carving. Okay, and we have all this extra material on the perimeter to do so. So we're going to have to change lighting angles so that the camera can see in this view. And then when I'm carving, you can actually see what's what's being accomplished as I push that in. But um, to discuss what we're trying to accomplish here, basically I'm going to come in and I'm just going to push in, right, with the edge and then flick up the material. And that's going to allow me to chase in the perimeter to a point where it's not so blocky on this edge. And then I just need to really knock down this upper bit and this little lumpy region there. So we're going to try that real quick and then uh, change the lighting back to what we started with, like that. So. Let's get that back in focus. So I'm slowly sliding my wax tool in, and then when I get to the depth that I think is appropriate, I'm flicking the blade, and that's just forcing these shavings to come clean up and give me a relatively smooth perimeter. Remember, initially when I was carving from top to bottom, that was giving me a lot of downward pressure control, but now because we're trying to adjust the perimeter, I'm coming in from the sides so that the bulk of the pressure is exerted on the area I'm trying to remove, right? So I'm trying to trim this perimeter, but only a little bit, right? So I'm trying to get all this back material out of the way and just gently shave this perimeter down to the shape that looks appropriate for a circle. Okay. So now we're going to bring the lighting back. So you can see we've got um, a smoother curve here, but still some lumpiness on this corner, right? So from there, I'm going to take the flat of my blade, get this back in focus. So it's fairly round. There's a little lump here, and you can actually see where my stippling line is. So we know we can flake off this tiny little bit. And so that little bit of rocker that you give to your tool is what allows you to really chase those lines in the way you want them. And you got to look at the whole thing and say, well, is it round, or do I need to shave more off of this perimeter? Do I need to shave some off this perimeter? And I'd say right now the planet is a little big all along here because it looks like right here are my stippling lines. And then here it just looks slightly off. So we're going to just go around and shave a little off. You don't want to be too aggressive because if you're too aggressive you end up shaving a little off of each side of your planet until all you have is a speck of dust. And then you ask yourself, well, maybe I went too fast. What do I do now? And we have to talk about building up all the all the wax that, that you carved off. And uh, we're going to get there, but it's better not to rush. You know, Take your time. Uh, it's always easy to take more off. It's a little harder to put it back on. So feel satisfied with this curve. But with this curve here, I think we have a little bit more chasing to do with that blade. So normally, when you're not doing this in front of a camera, you just park it on the table and then get your face right in there. Bring the lighting back. 
put your face right in there and um, focus on cleaning up those lines so that they look appropriate to you okay but this is the carving position you're going to want the only reason i'm switching to this position is so that the camera can see let the table do the work so that you can use your fingers and wrists a little longer in the day and please take the time when you're carving to like stretch your fingers right wiggle them out I cannot tell you how often people won't do um, extension exercises. We're really good at flexing our hands. Great grip strength, but we don't we don't ever try to stretch our hands out. So if you've got a rubber band laying around the studio or at home, just wrap that around your fingers and then just practice opening them once you're done. Otherwise, your hands are going to be a little more sore than you'd like uh, the next day. I know it doesn't seem like you're doing a lot when you're carving wax, but uh, it's it's surprisingly hard on on the hands, um, especially your pinky. You're using your pinky uh, most of the time. Let's uh, switch the lighting here. Most of the time when you're carving, um, you're pinching right with your index and your thumb, but then if you're doing it right, your pinky and your ring finger are supporting your middle finger, so that all that. All that pressure is getting exerted, you know, through the whole hand. And that's what's allowing us to carve. So if you don't take the time to, like, move those hands, those fingers, and stretch them, um, everything gets sore in your forearm. And you're going to end up with, you know, tennis elbow without having playing any tennis. And people will say, well, why does your elbow hurt? And you're like, well, I was holding onto this tiny thing for a long time scraping wax and uh who knew it required so much strength okay so here we are this is our roundish moon and i may tinker with it a little bit more but um i think that's about right so we'll start another demo <laughs>